just what is the spiritual meaning of the heavenly signs in the Olivet Discourse where the sun is darkened, the moon does not give its light, and the stars fall from heaven? We're going to look at that in this video. We've been working on a series of YouTube videos about the Olivet Discourse. This was a discourse when Jesus was on the Mount of Olives during the Passion Week. He spoke it to his disciples. The prophecy had to do with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Not one stone would be left upon another. The disciples, of course, had two questions. When will these temples buildings be destroyed? And secondly, what is the sign of the end of the world and the second coming? So the whole Olivet Discourse in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, it had all together to do with which is known as the Great Tribulation. It's the time period of intense tribulation on the church prior to the second coming of Christ, and then also the last day in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner. Let's also look briefly at the order of events of the end times. Now, we've been in the church age for about 2,000 years. There's an apostasy that begins at the end of this period, which I do believe that we're in now, because all the signs are there, and we've done a video on that, which I'll tag on the slide. Then there's the Great Tribulation. The Antichrist is revealed. The Abomination of Desolation is in place. Babylon is the church. And that's what a great part of Olivet Discourse is all about, is the Great Tribulation and the last days. Now, the heavenly signs, which we looked at in the last video, and we're going to look at it in this video in more detail, occur on the last day at the same time at the coming, second coming of Jesus Christ, which is when the general resurrection of the dead for salvation or judgment. And that ushers in the eternity in the new heavens and new earth, face to face with God in eternity. In the last video, we looked at the sign of the end of the world. The disciples had asked Jesus, what will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That word sign is used throughout the Bible. In the Greek, it's the word simeon. In Hebrew, it's oath. It always has to do with a real event, but it points to a more important spiritual truth. And there's the final sign that will be given there should be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We looked at that in the last video, which I'll tag on this slide, where the sun is dark and the moon does not give light. The stars fall and the powers of the heaven are shaken. We're going to look at the sun, the moon, and stars in this video. In an upcoming video, we're going to look at the powers of the heavens being shaken. And again, please subscribe to this channel. And we're going to go on and we're going to look at the symbolic meaning of the moon, the sun, and the stars. Now, the sign of this, the coming of Jesus Christ, it happens at the same time. There's these heavenly signs where the sun, the moon, and the stars, they're going to be affected. The sun is darkened. The moon doesn't give its light. The stars fall from heaven. We see in Matthew 24, 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, those heavenly signs. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That word then, in both this passage and also in Luke 21, it's the Greek word tot, which means at that time. So it's at the same time. The signs, the heavenly signs happen at that time, at the same time of the coming of the Son of Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. So let's go on and look at this in more detail. Now these heavenly signs point to very important spiritual truth. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars fall from heaven. And we're going to look in the next uh, slide that the sun and the moon and the stars are for signs. There are symbolic things that come out of that. Signs, and they're also timekeepers. They're for seasons and days and years. And we see the darkening of these sun, moon, and stars has all together to do with God's judgment, firstly. There's no more light of the gospel. And also, there's no more time because it's the last day. Time has ended because there's not going to be any sun or moon to keep the time. Now, this thing about the sun, moon, and stars being affected or darkened or falling from heaven are talked about many places in the Bible. Acts chapter 2, Revelation 6, which we've done a video on that, the sixth seal of Revelation. All through the Old Testament, we even see in Jesus Christ there is darkness 
for three hours before he gave up his spirit. So all of these things have symbolic meaning and they're important for us to understand. Before we go on to look at this, the symbolic meaning of the sun, the moon, and the stars, let's just understand that the sun and the moon are timekeepers. The fact that the sun will be dark and the moon should not give its light refers to the fact that it's the end time. There's no more time. It's the last day. And when the, the sun, moon, and stars are affected, it's at the coming of Christ. It's the last day. Let's read Genesis 1. Let there be lights to divide the day from the night. And there's symbolic meaning. They're for signs. They're for symbolic meanings. But they're also for seasons. Seasons literally mean appointments. The, the congregation, the word congregation in the Old Testament means appointment. It's where the people got together for days and for years. They, they were timekeepers. Let them give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made two, two great lights, the sun and the moon. These are two lights. They're two witnesses of God's word. It's about the gospel. The moon is the lesser light. It's the, the veiled truth about Christ in the Old Testament that we see clearly in the New Testament, the two witnesses. The sun and the moon being darkened point to the end of time. There is no more time. On the last day, time ends. So we're going to look at this thing, and we're going to look at the fact that th there's a lot of important spiritual truth about the day versus uh, the day has the light, but then there's the night, which has darkness, and we need to understand what darkness is all about. And when we look at that, we see the darkness has altogether to do with God's judgment. Of course, Christ was being judged on the cross for our sins, but on the last day, it's time for judgment. We see, for example, Joel chapter 3, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, the stars shall withdraw their shining, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion. He utters his voice from Jerusalem, the heavens and the earth shall shake, the powers of the heavens are shaken, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. It's judgment day. It's the last day. It's a day of judgment, but also it's a day of salvation. Now, as we looked in the last video, this darkening of the sun, the moon, and then the, the stars falling to, from heaven have all together to do with no more light. No more light. And we see that the light is a representation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ will shine on them. And that's, that's what light represents. Jesus Christ is light. He is the light of the world. He's the light of life because his life, it's the gospel. And continuing for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness that goes all the way back to creation, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light has altogether to do, symbolically, of the gospel, because otherwise we're in darkness. We also see uh, in 2 Timothy 1, our Savior Jesus Christ has brought life, and that's eternal life and immortality, to light through the gospel. The gospel has altogether to do with light, and we're going to see in this video that the sun, the moon, and the stars have all together to do with the gospel itself. The heavens declare the glory of God. Psalm 19, day unto day utter speech. The heavens are talking to us. It's a, it's a general revelation that everybody has. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Everybody in the world knows about the sun, the moon, and the stars. Their line has gone out through all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. They're speaking volumes because they have symbolic meaning. But we see in Romans 10, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's people, God's elect, chosen from the foundation of the world, hear the word of God through the Bible, which is our specific revelation. But I say, have they not heard? You can question it. What about people that have never heard the Bible? Well, yes, verily, but their sound went into all the earth and their words into the ends of the world, quoting Psalm 19. Because everybody, the heavens are the witness of, of God being existing in, as the provider of light. Let's take a look at the sixth seal of Revelation because it's essentially a parallel passage. I'll tag the video we've done on this on this slide. Please consider watching that video. We have a whole video series 
180 videos that go all the way through the book of Revelation. But in this, we read in Revelation 6, when he had opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, because it's time for judgment, by the way. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell onto the earth, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. Blackness points to judgment day. The sackcloth of hair points to mourning, because, and we see that also in the Olivet Discourse, that people are going to be mourning. But the whole context of the sixth seal is the last day or judgment day. And we see that right in the passage, Revelation 6, 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who should be able to stand? So we know that this heavenly signs about the sun, the moon, and the stars in the Olivet Discourse have all together to do with the last day, which is judgment day. Okay, also Revelation 21 because Judgment Day, those lights are going to be no longer needed. We see in eternity that the heavenly, the heavenly city that comes to the earth, new earth, new heavens, and new Jerusalem, the city has no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. There should be no night. They have no need of candle, near, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, because Jesus Christ is the light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The light on Judgment Day, that's the, what the heavenly signs mean, that the light is no longer required. Because instead of seeing in a glass darkly, we'll see God face to face. Okay, so now let's go through... And let's now look at a little bit more detail about what the sun represents, what the moon represents, and what the stars represent, just to add additional depth of meaning and depth of understanding. First, we see that Jesus Christ is represented by the sun. The sun is symbolic of the gospel or the light of Christ. He's called the bright and morning star, which is the sun. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus... I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. It's beautiful. Uh, in Luke 178, right before his incarnation, his, right before his first coming, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. Day spring, the Greek word Anatoly, literally means the rising. And in other words, the day spring, the rising of the sun. The sun points to the one who's Jesus Christ, who brings us, because the light of the gospel, because he, he is the gospel. Jesus is very bluntly called and related to the Son. Revelation 1 16. In an in image of Jesus, his countenance is as the sun that shines in its strength. We see in Malachi 4 2, unto you that fear my name, the sun, S U N, of righteousness, arise with healing in his wings. And that's Jesus Christ. He's the son of righteousness, S-U-N. He's transfiguration. His face did shine as the sun. His raiment was white as the light. He's the light of the world, Matthew 24, that we've already looked at. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? The sun will be darkened. That's what the sign is. Because in him was life. The life was the light of men. We don't need that sun in the sky anymore. For eternity, we have Jesus Christ. The light shines in darkness, and darkness doesn't comprehend it. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Well, in eternity, we have the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, where we have the eternal light face to face forevermore. The sun is darkened. What does that word darkened mean? Darkened means, it's not the word for black, because there are other, is other spiritual significance of the word black, but it's the Greek word skotizo. It means to obscure. And we see Luke 21, 25, again, there's signs in the sun. And we see in Jude 13, is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's what judgment day, that's what eternity without Christ is. That's what eternal torment or eternal separation from God is. It's the blackness of darkness forever. And that's where people that are not God's people, everybody else has that to look forward to. It's sad. We see in the parable of those with no wedding garments, Take him away, cast him into the outer darkness. The parable of the talents, cast that unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. To be darkened, it points to the eternity 
without the light of Christ. It's a horrible, horrible thing. Okay, now let's turn. We've looked at the sun. What's the sun represents the gospel or the light of Jesus Christ. The moon shall not get her light. Now the moon, some people stumble over that, but it has similar meanings. So we see again, immediately after the tribulation, the moon shall not give her light. It's a sign of the last day. We see a parallel passage in the book of Joel. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The stars shall withdraw the shining. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army, because it's judgment day. The army, the battle is at Armageddon, which has got symbolic meaning. We've done videos on that. For his camp is very great, because his camp are the angels and God's people all together. For he is strong that executes his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Judgment day. And we see that the moon shall be dark on that day. We see that the moon, as we delve more into the symbolic meaning of the moon, it's actually a reflection, because the moon's light is simply a reflection of the sun. The sun is the gospel or the light of Jesus Christ. It's a reflection of Christ. It's not as strong as the sun, but it ref does reflect the light of the sun. You can still see that light of the sun's impact. And we see very interestingly in the Old Testament, that the moon is heavily tied to the festivals, the symbols in the law of Moses. They reflect Christ. It's not as clear as we have in the New Testament, but the Old Testament gospel, it's, it's somewhat, it's, it's not as clear. It's not as bright. Colossians 2, let no man judge you in meat, drink, or in respect to a holy day, or of the new moon, or the Sabbath days. And all of those special holidays and festivals were all based on the moon. The word month in the Old Testament, it's simply the word moon. That's why it's called a month. It's very similar to the word moon because it's based on the moon. There, but those things in the Old Testament were shadows. They were dimmer. It's not the full sun in its glory. It's a shadow of things to come. But the bodies of Christ, all those things in the Old Testament, in one way or the other, pointed to things about the gospel. Luke 24, Jesus said, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. All of those things, all of those festivals and ordinances and all of that had to be fulfilled in Christ. And in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me, that's what Jesus Christ recognized, that the Old Testament is like a moon. It's got the gospel in it, but it's harder to see. The moon was given for ordinances. And again, the, the word moon is, is tied to the word for month. It's the same thing. Jeremiah 31, thus says the Lord, which gives the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. The moon is still a light, but it's an ordinance. And that ordinance word in the Old Testament, it, it's, it's translated as statutes or ordinances. And it always pointed to the ceremonial law in the law of Moses. And again, picking back up in Colossians, 3, uh, Colossians chapter 2, having forgiven you all trespasses, blot at, blotting out that handwriting of ordinances, all those festivals and feasts and new moons and all the things you had to do in the Old Testament in the law of Moses, they're blotted out. They were against us. We could never keep them because we're weak which was contrary to us, but they took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Christ fulfilled all things. Therefore, let no man judge you in respect to a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which again are a shadow of things to come. But the body is Christ. The moon was given for ordinances. The moon rules by night. That's talked about in, in Psalm 136. To him that made great lights. And again, light points to the gospel. It points to the light of Christ. But they're, they're great lights for his mercy endures forever. The suns are ruled by day, which is the brighter light. And the lesser lights, which are the moon and the stars, rule by night. The sun we already saw is Christ, the gospel light, the day of salvation. Day to day utter speech and night unto night shows knowledge. The days show the gospel very clearly. But the Knights, the Old Testament law, it's a reflection. We can still see the gospel in there, but it's harder to see. It's a reflection. It's like looking through a, a dim glass. 
The moon in Genesis 1.16 is the lesser light to rule the night. It's not as clear as the brighter light. And by the way, the sun and the moon, when they appear in our sky, are actually the same size. Because that's why we get full eclipses. But obviously the sun is much brighter than the moon. And again, the light points to the gospel. Psalm is 43.3 and many other verses. And again, the moon is that same Hebrew word for month. And it points to all those festivals of God, but they all the festivals point to Christ and salvation. And just very quickly, on this slide, we list the, 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 the festivals. He appointed the moon for seasons. Seasons are also interpreted as appointed feasts. Psalm 104, 19. We see in the first month, the Passover has all together to do with Christ and the blood of Christ and salvation. The days of unleavened bread has all together to do with the word of God and, and the truth of the word of God. And Jesus Christ is the bread of life. The first fruits, it's Pentecost. It's the giving of the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the first early harvest. The seventh month, the day of trumpets. Well, that's the, the last day. It, it's the time for, time for judgment. But it's still, it's still talking about the gospel and truth about Jesus Christ. The day of atonement, the atonement of Christ. The day of tabernacles, which is the last day that ushers us into, into eternity. Living in tabernacles, being with God face to face. All of the ceremony festivals were based on the moon, but they all pointed to Jesus Christ and things about him and, and salvation and eternity. Okay, let's now, we've looked at the sun, we've looked at the moon, let's look at the stars now because they fall from heaven. Now stars symbolize angels. We see again the stars fall from heaven, that they're a sign that's given to us of the last day because they fall from heaven. But we see that stars are often uh, used as a symbol for angels or messengers. The word messenger and the word angel in the Old Testament and the New Testament are the same word. Sometimes it translates as messengers, sometimes as angels. But angels are messengers. We see in Revelation 1.20, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. They're angels, they're messengers. But we see also that there's a, a, a spiritual symbolic third part of these stars of heaven that were cast to the earth by Satan's tail. And they're demons. So there's also demonic messengers. And we see the word for angel, Ag Agaleon, it's very closely tied to the word for gospel because the gospel, the word uh, means good message. Good message is the gospel. Angels are uh, Ag Agaleon. They're angels. It's good angels. They're good messengers. And of course, all Christians essentially are messengers of, of the gospel. Now, we see that the stars, the messengers of the gospel, angels throughout the Bible were always known to bring the word of God. We see in Hebrews 2.2, 2, if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and again, that word angel, literally, it's the messengers, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. We also see in Revelation 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and he sent it and signified it. He sent it in signs. The whole book of Revelation is a whole book of signs. And again, please consider looking at our our series that we've done on Revelation, it'll, it should really help. But he signified it by his angel, his messenger, unto his servant John. So angels or messengers or the stars that symbolize them point to, the, again, it's the messenger of the gospel. They, they bring the gospel. They bring the word of God. And again, now they're going to be fallen from heaven because the, the word of God is now complete. We have Christ face to face. But also, there's another little nuance on the stars falling from heaven because they fall for judgment. The stars shall withdraw their shining, Joel 3.15. Matthew 13, the Son of Man sends forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and, that, and them which do iniquity. They come for judgment. They accompany Christ on judgment day. They come with him. And by the way, God's people are caught up together with them in the clouds and God, angels and God's people all come with Christ for judgment. 
2 Thessalonians 1, to you who are troubled, rest with us. And this whole passage here is talking about the last day. It's talking about the day of salvation for God's people and judgment for the wicked. We're, we're, we who are troubled in this world, we finally get to full rest from these fleshly issues that we have. When And when does that happen? When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. They're coming down to, to earth. They're coming with Christ in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And they that, that do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. They're sent into that outer darkness. How sad a day that will be. We also see in, right in Matthew 24 in the Olivet Discourse, that he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four wings. Those angels come with Christ. They're, it's his armies of heaven are coming with him, Revelation 19. And they're coming with him, and there's, there's to gather the, the elect come, and they gather together in the clouds, they meet Christ, but also they come for judgment. Matthew 16, for the Son of Man come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works, salvation or judgment. Just a quick summary on this video. We tried in this video to focus on the sun, the moon, and the stars and what they symbolically mean. Because we know the sign of the return of Jesus Christ, the second of coming of Christ, has all together to do with the sun being dark and the moon not giving its light and the stars falling from heaven. And we see that no light, all of these bring light. They're the, the greater light, the sun, and the lesser light of the moon and the stars at night. There's no uh, light anymore, no gospel, because salvation is completed. And we usher into eternity to be face to face with Christ, the light for eternity. The sun represents Jesus Christ as the light of the gospel. And it's darkened because it's, a, it's an eternity without the light of Christ. It's like going into outer darkness. The moon is the gospel, but it's it's not as bright as the sun because it's shadows of the Mosaic law, shadows of the Old Testament. But again, no light. Those things, the gospel is completed. God's people are saved and it's judgment day. The stars are the angels or the messengers of God. And again, there's no more light of the gospel. It's time for judgment day, but they fall from heaven because they come with Christ to earth to judge with Christ in vengeance and they gather God's elect for salvation. Please consider subscribing to this channel and thank you very much for watching this video.